permit me to say, I'm not trying to disrespect you, okay? Your vice president mm -hmm. came to Africa mm -hmm. telling us we should be gays, we should be lesbian. You have your own culture. Mm -hmm. I have my own culture. So why would your vice president, or maybe, should I even say, let me mention a name, Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. should come to Ghana and tell us to be gay, to accept this LGBTQ+. Well, I don't want to say that um, she speaks for every single American. And I also do want to say that I support gay and LGBTQ rights. But I um, know that you have your own culture here. And um, I guess that's kind of hard to navigate because um, everyone has their own opinion. And it's important that everyone gets to have their own opinion respected. Can you tell us more about you, who you are, why you came to Africa for the first time? Yeah, so um, my auntie Diane and my cousin Rachel invited us on this group trip because there were two extra places. Um, so I decided why not because I knew that there was such a rich African culture and I wanted to learn more about it. Um, I wanted to get the chance to meet people here and make connections and um, explore a new place that I've never been to before. So coming to Africa and now that you are in Africa, what, what, what do you have to say about Africa? Because when I talk about Africa, I will say you are not an African-American. You are not a diaspora. You are a typical European or maybe an American. So some people have this perception about Africa that Africa is just a dirty place that people shouldn't visit and so forth. So now that you are in Africa, what do you really think of Africa? I love it. I love everything about it. It's really beautiful. Um, the people are beautiful and the culture is beautiful and warm and inviting and I have felt so welcomed everywhere that I go. Um, I think it's really important to learn about the hard things. Um, we went to the Elmina Slave Dungeon earlier today and that was a really difficult trip but I think it was important for us to see and hear about. I'm definitely really grateful for that experience, even though it was really hard. You know, it's it's, it's all about conversation. We are not here to um, uh, discriminate or anything of that. We are not here to consider somebody to be a superior country or anything of that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, talking about um, Africa per se, Americans have this kind of um, perception that they normally um, misbehave. Let me, let me put it that way. I'm not trying to... Um, say somebody's country is, 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 is wrong or something, but the way they treat some of the African-Americans in America seems to be like they are rejected and so forth. Do you think, is it a good thing, or maybe is it a good thing for an American to be treating an African-American like that? Absolutely not. Um, I've been in America for my whole life, and I've seen a lot of the injustice and um, that a lot of white Americans have for black Americans. Um, and it's like, it's heartbreaking to see every day because um, I don't see black Americans as any different from me and for white Americans. Um, and I do understand that it's the um, aftermath of the slave trade and how um, perceptions have remained since the slave trade. Um, but it is heartbreaking that since black Americans have found freedom 200 years, 250 years ago, um, they've still had to suffer every single day. So as you were going to the Elmina Castle, or maybe the dungeon, they were narrating a whole lot of stories about how this American treated the Africans. Mm -hmm. You were in the midst of African Americans. Mm -hmm. At that moment that they were narrating the stories and so forth, were you really afraid to be with the African Americans while they were narrating the stories? Because the way the story goes, it was like the Americans didn't respect the Africans and so forth. So as you were um, the only American, maybe you guys being an American, um, joining African American in this same dungeons that they are telling you a history about how all this slave trade happened. Were you really afraid? I was not afraid. Um, I was only grateful to be experiencing it with them. Um, I 
can say that I, my family is part of a diaspora. Um, we're not European American, we're um, Middle Eastern, Iranian. So um, my family got there pretty recently. Um, but it's still a huge part of my life, the Americans and um, being, or how African Americans live in America. Um, but I was not afraid. I was um, just grateful to be there with them, to be of support, because it was very emotional. Wow. So do you think that your, your forefathers, or maybe your grandfathers, did Africa well in terms of slavery and so forth? I don't really know what the um, relationships were between Iran and Africa um, hundreds of years ago. <laughs> I know that there were um, some, I know that there is a small black population in the south of Iran um, because of migration, but I'm not really sure the details about it. But I can pretty much say with confidence that I know that Iran isn't perfect and the people there are colorists and um, probably have mistreated black people at one point. You know, I'm not asking you this question because some, somebody might think it's a personal attack that I'm asking you this question, but we just want to see the picture, the bigger picture that people have already painted and so forth. You know, there's a gap between um, Africans and also African Americans. So we are trying to merge all this gap, yes, for us to come together and so forth. But you coming to Africa, at least you've seen a whole lot of things. You, you alighted from um, Kotuka International Airport. You are now in Cape Coast. You, as you were on your way coming, you saw a whole lot of things and so forth. Do you really think Africa is a kind of continent that don't need any other continent to survive? I think that it used to be um, before the Europeans came. Um, and the Europeans came and messed up a lot of things. And since then, um, because of the damage that they did to the people and the economy here, um, it now is dependent on other continents. So in, 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 in your way, if I'm, supposed, if I'm supposed to ask you to describe Africa, how would you describe Africa to me? In like a few words? Yes, in your way. In my in way. In my way. Okay. Um, warm, beautiful, um, welcoming, tradition filled, um, colorful, and happy. Wow. You actually moved from America to Africa just to um, experience the naming ceremony and so forth. Mm -hmm. So now that you have this American gene in you, mm -hmm. and now you are in Africa to have an African name, which name particularly are you going to use now as, as you've done African naming ceremony? Are you going to let go of the American name and then use the African name? No, because I'm not African. I don't think it would be um, in my place to use my African name. I will always treasure it, and I'm really grateful that I got to experience it. But I won't use it like on a day-to-day -day basis. So would you like to marry an African man? <laughs> um, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I do have a boyfriend, um, but I don't know. If I don't. I don't have an opinion about it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think your mom is really laughing and so forth. You know. <laughs> so, so she's trying to convince you to say yes, but I don't. I don't want to justify the fact that you need to listen to your mom and so forth. I just want you to tell me in your heart, would you like to marry an African man? Don't say yes. If you say yes, you have a reason to that. If you say no, you have a reason to that, and you explain it to me. So tell me. Okay. Um, I would say I wouldn't choose who I marry based on their ethnicity. I don't want to talk about all these things, but permit me to say, I'm not trying to disrespect you, okay? Your vice president mm -hmm. came to Africa mm -hmm. telling us we should be gays, we should be lesbian. You have your own culture, mm -hmm. I have my own culture. So why would your vice president, or maybe should I even say, let me mention a name, Kamala Harris mm -hmm. should come to Ghana and tell us to be gay to accept this LGBTQ plus. Well, I don't want to say that um, she speaks for every single American, and I also do want to say that 
I support gay and LGBTQ rights, but I um, know that you have your own culture here. And um, I guess that's kind of hard to navigate because um, everyone has their own opinion and it's important that everyone gets to have their own opinion respected. I'm, I'm challenging you. Why don't you move to um, Africa? Then you start learning how to cook their food and so forth. Because I, I know you have few days mm -hmm. left for you to go back to the States. Mm -hmm. So maybe after this um, five days or maybe a week that you are spending in Ghana, mm -hmm. why don't you just come back and get a dual citizenship? Then you stay in Africa forever. That does sound nice. And if things allowed me to, I might consider it. But um, I have a life going on in the U.S. And as much as I love it here, um, and I would take an opportunity to come and stay here if I could. Um, I won't do it right away. Friends are watching you and so forth. What do you have to tell your friends? I know you are in a hurry. You need to get back to your hotel and so forth. So this one is a quick interview. All right. Thank you so much for interviewing me. Um, I love Africa and please come visit. That's it. So as you are watching, Mina is here in Africa for the first time. So if, if you are an American or maybe you are white or wherever you are watching this video, please move to Africa because I've, I'm challenging Mina that um, next month she has to pack her things and then move to Africa. And don't worry, everything is set for, for her. So as she is moving, the boyfriend too is also moving. So as you are watching this channel, please support us and then subscribe to our channel. Bye-bye.